individual retirement accounts or IRAs can be tricky to understand, especially because there are so many options to think about. Michael Egan is a certified financial planner and a partner of Egan Burger and Weiner LLC and is here to talk about everything we need to know about IRAs. This is IRAs 101, That's right, right Sonia. So we're talking about the different kinds of IRAs. How many different types are there? Tell us what Well, there's several, are. but the two we're going to talk about today right. are the big ones. So the traditional IRA or the old IRA that everybody knows about mm -hmm. and the Roth IRA. So okay. there's some differences between the two. And the traditional, you may or may not get a deduction depending on whether or not you have a qualified plan at work okay. uh, or um, your overall income level. Okay. The Roth IRA, under no circumstances will you get a write-off for it. Wow. So people would say, why would I do a Roth? Right, we're exactly. Gonna, we're going to talk about that in a second. Okay. Both of the IRAs, once the money gets inside of the account, it grows tax deferred. That means if you earned 10% that year on your investment, you get to retain that whole 10% okay. until you actually pull it out in retirement. Okay. So you get better compounding because of that tax deferral. So you were talking about putting the money into the accounts. What are our contribution limits for 2013? So contribution limits for 2013 are 5,500. That's, okay. that's an increase over last year, okay. which was 5,000. Uh, and another 1,000 if you're over the age of 50. So if you're a married couple, let's say 55 years old, that each of you could put in the $6,500, 13,000. Okay. Now again, you gotta make sure that you've earned at least that much money. So a lot of people who are fully retired and no longer have earned income can no longer contribute to IRAs. Okay. But if you do have the earned income and that earned income is at least the amount of your contribution, you can contribute that. So when you were talking about the contribution limits, should we really push ourselves to put in that, that full amount or should we you know, no, I think make so. some it, decisions? It, I think it's really a function of your overall financial plan. The number okay. one thing you should be doing if you're saving for your retirement is making sure that you're maximizing your 401k at work at least up until the matching contributions end. Okay. After that, then consider the IRAs possibly as a diverse, diversification tool or a tax diversification tool. Okay. What about beneficiaries? So beneficiaries are big. A lot of people don't spend a lot of time on the beneficiary forms and as a result, assets that could have skipped probate, which mean they get to your heirs a lot faster, mm -hmm. don't okay. because you just ignore it. So maybe you put your spouse on there and you say, oh, that contingent beneficiary, I got five kids, I'm not going to list them all because the form's only got two spots on it or, you know, I'm not really sure. And it's it, an uncomfortable thing to think about, too. You're thinking about... You know, the, the, the negative parts yeah, the of life, after. <laughs> the after part. <laughs> so, so you should spend that time now. Absolutely. You know, whether it's a trust or, or children or nieces, nephews, whoever, naming a person is much better than naming no one because then it defaults to going to your estate, which then means probate. Okay. And are there rules about distributing that money or I can just decide exactly how I want to distribute it and, and go from there? So there are rules. Okay. So it, again, this is a retirement account. Mm -hmm. So you're putting the money in, you got to be thinking 59 and a half is the earliest age I'm going to really tap it. Okay. Uh, so on the traditional IRA, 59 and a half, I've got a, I, I'm, I'm allowed to start pulling money out without a penalty. Okay. And then at 70 and a half, as you can see from the chart here mm -hmm. on the screen, you have to start taking distributions from that account, even if you don't need the money. And there's a formula. The IRS actually has a formula that says, we predict you're going to die at this age. <laughs> okay. You know, and be, based on that, you got to pull this out. So like in year one, when you turn 70, mm -hmm. that amount is actually about 3.6% of the account. Okay. Uh, and then by the time you're 80, it increases to like five and a half and it for the IRS is age 115. I know you. 115. I know you hope to live that long, okay. Sonia. I'm out at like 83. <laughs> That's kind of my personal plan. Okay. Um, but one of the big things to, to think about here is when I pull the money out, what is the tax consequence? So right. in a traditional IRA, the ordinary income tax is paid on all of the money that comes out, assuming you got a deduction on the way. In the mm -hmm. Roth IRA, the benefit of it is it's tax free when you pull it out. So if you know you can wait. The Roth can be a very Roth. attractive tool. Uh, the rules are you got to be at least 59 and a half and okay. have the account open for at least five years to get that tax-free withdrawal. And our recommendation to our clients is typically spend the Roth last to oh, give okay. the most compounding to the asset with the least amount of taxes. Thank you so much, Michael Egan. I look forward to spending my money when I'm 115 years old. Thank you for that information. Yeah. More Let's Talk Lives coming up. Stick with us right here.